You've heard it before, but shape is king. Finding that perfect mouse to complement your hand size, your grip, and your play style is ultimately gonna be the deciding factor in what makes you a better gamer or not. Because let's face it, there is no one mouse out there you can buy that will just automatically make you a better player. That's not how it works at all. It's building the repetition, the consistency over time, the muscle memory, which will improve your aim and make you a better gamer. You wanna find the perfect mouse that just feels like a natural extension of your hand because after all, we're all looking for that end game mouse. And uh, today, for me, I think I found it. What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and we're gonna be checking out the brand new Pulsar X2 Mini Wireless, which I think is damn near perfect for me, and uh, it's definitely my favorite mouse of the year. So while this mouse releases in about a week, I've had my unit and tested it for a bit now, and I've gotta say, I am thoroughly impressed. I've been a fan of what Pulsar has been doing in the mouse market lately, and they've made considerable improvements and upgrades with this new X2 lineup. So first, obviously, this is their symmetrical design after releasing Ergo Mice at first. And in community terms, it's ambidextrous. There are no right side buttons, just two left side buttons. It does still follow their design language in a sense, or you have the exposed bottom, but as you probably picked up on by now, we don't have any cutouts or holes in the top shell like they used to. Now, the entire exterior is solid. This is something you may or may not care about, but I can tell you from seeing feedback on my end, you either don't mind at all, or you absolutely despise cutouts. So here they went smaller and lighter without triggering your trypophobia, although their cutouts were lines, not holes. But anyways, for the shell and the coating, it's nothing too, too special, I'll say. It feels like you're a standard plastic mouse, but I will note it does a really good job of not picking up on smudges or fingerprint oils from your hands. All right, now we're gonna do a sound test. There's actually three different switches in here, which may be normal. I don't know if it is. Uh, for our left and right clicks, we have KLGM 8.0s. On the left side buttons, they are Juano White, and then our encoder is TTC Gold. So altogether, no creaking or loose components rattling about. It all feels good, solid, and crisp from the trio of switches inside. And I will say, definitely digging the feel and tactility of the scroll wheel here. As someone who pretty much spams this in Battlefield, feels great. On my unit, there was a little bit of post travel in the left and right clicks, but it's like a softer bottom out against the shell, so it doesn't feel like a rough plastic on plastic contact you sometimes see. Now underneath, like I said earlier, we still do have the exposed cutouts showing the off-white inspired PCB inside, but if anything, I'm sure people much prefer the cutouts underneath versus the top shell. The feet here are 100% pure PTFE skates, although I'm sure down the line they're going to offer glass superglides if you love those like I do. And they make swapping skates a breeze with the designated cutouts, but they're still just very, very smooth feeling on my mouse pad. Definitely no complaints here. In the top right corner of the PCB, you can see the size one text, denoting this is the mini, as size two is their medium. Will there be a size three? I don't know. But also underneath, we have the dedicated DPI button with four DPI presets saved onto the mouse, coinciding with the LED light right above the side buttons there. Then on the bottom right side, you have your on and off switcher, which by the way, I much prefer versus having just one button that does both power and DPI. This is just much more convenient. Then smack dab in the middle is the 16,000 DPI PAW3339, which is a trusted Pixar sensor in both the X2 Mini here and the larger X2, as well as some other mice that were announced to be released this year as well. It's rated at 650 IPS, your typical 50G acceleration, and 1000 Hertz pulling. Absolutely no issues here, but I'll talk about my gaming experience in a minute. Now getting into the goods, size and dimensions. On my scale, it comes in just around 53 grams, although it's advertised at 52, but you give that one gram variance. And it sits 116 millimeters long. It's 37 millimeters high at its highest point, 20 millimeters tall at the front flare, 56 millimeters wide at the grip width, and then 61 millimeters at the hip width. And if you ask me, this is the love child between the Endgame Gear XM1 and the Logitech G Pro X Superlight. You know, one night in college, they had too much Red Bull and vodkas. Then about 16 production months later, we have the baby Pulsar X2 Mini. 
No, but seriously though, from the XM1, it's a very similar shape in the hand where the hump sits, and it also feels very similar to the G Pro X Superlite, it's just less eggy overall. And obviously, this is much smaller. So for those looking for something between like a smaller wireless uh, Zowie S2C, for example, or even really like a wireless endgame gear mouse, I feel Pulsar just really nails it here. Now, for my time gaming with this, it's been nothing short of fantastic. It's funny because for me in the past, I've always gravitated more towards medium or larger size mice to fit my grip, which depending on what game I'm playing or what I'm doing in game, it's usually like a claw fingertip hybrid, but I've just absolutely loved using this smaller mini version here. Primarily when stamping in Battlefield, I played at 16,000 DPI with my in-game sensitivity turned down 50%, so it's more like 800 DPI in game. But as you can see, I have a very small radius of movement. Again, most likely due to the fact that the majority of my gameplay is sniping in a game that I've all but mastered the last four years or so. But the overall point is, like I said in the intro, it just feels like a natural extension of my hand. The way it feels is so natural, and just the less you think about your physical mouse, the more you get to focus on your gameplay in front of you. And that's exactly what finding the perfect mouse allows you to do. I had zero issues with it. No hiccups, no latency or anything, no distracting RGB. At its core, it's just a fantastic gaming mouse. And I've probably only charged it once since getting this in. I believe it's rated for like 70 hours of use, but just, man. All around, this really, really surprised me. I love this thing. Now for the software, again, since this hasn't been released yet, we're still on an older build, so you'll see here the X-Lite instead, but it's pretty bland overall, but straightforward. You have your key bindings for the five buttons. Uh, the settings tab then lets you configure the four onboard DPI stages and pick a color for the LED to glow on the left side so you know what DPI you're at. You have your pulling rate adjustment, lift off distance, and your other mouse settings here. And then lastly is the macro tab for creating and assigning macros to the mouse if you need this for your MMOs and such. But yeah, nothing too crazy going on here for the software. Now, one thing I'll say I don't necessarily agree with is the $95 price point we have here. Yes, we have a brand new sensor and yes, there's no holes in the shell, but the X-Lite V2, you know, the wireless and stuff, that was only 80 bucks. So $15 for that, I would have loved to see if they could honor that $80 price point going forward as like this Pulsar staple and stuff for their flagship mice. 95 though, just a little bit eh. Now, Yale will also point out the fact that it's still $55 cheaper than the industry leading Razer Viper V2 Pro and the G Pro X Superlite. So if this shape is for you, then I'm sure you won't think twice about a mouse under $100. So at the end of the day, the new X2 Mini from Pulsar is really just one of the most natural feeling mice I've ever used, where it does feel like that natural extension of your hand while you're gaming. And yeah, we're in August right now. There's probably gonna be a few more releases before the holidays and stuff. For me right now, this is the perfect mouse. And it is hands down my favorite mouse of the year so far. So big, big ups to Pulsar for really killing it over the last year or so and putting out new improved mice seemingly every few months. Really loving the new X2 Mini Wireless. And guys, that'll wrap it up my review. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.